let me start by saying that the issues that men have, a lot of times we hope that you are a safe place for us because a lot of men, they don't talk to other men. They don't have other men that they can confide in, that they can share their weaknesses with. So a lot of times we lean on our woman to be that safe place for us. But I do believe that men need community. Men should be accountable for their actions, right? I'm not saying that this is a video that should let men off the hook because there's a lot of areas that we need to tighten up from finances to our personal health, uh, to our mental health, you know, a lot of areas, right? So I'm not letting men off the hook. And I have a lot of videos on my website and also on the YouTube channel that's geared towards men that's, that can help them to become the best possible version of themselves. So I just want to make that clear. This isn't a video to beat up my ladies, but this is just to bring some awareness to um, some of the things that as a woman that you might do unintentionally and that these are things that make your man feel disrespected. So let's jump into these three things, ladies, that you are doing unintentionally to make your man feel disrespected. Number one is to listen without a judgmental response. That's very important because when a man feels like he can open up to you, he's going to try. So say if this is the first time he's really opening up to you about an issue that he's dealing with, he wants to gauge to see if you're going to judge him or not. And if this happened to him in the past, he might be a little apprehensive about telling you about it because maybe someone he tried to share this with before in a previous relationship or with another woman or possibly even with his mom, the judgment came. And then he shut down. So now he thinks that all women, I'm not saying it's fair, but he's thinking that all women think like being judgmental if he decides to share something personal with you. So listen without a judgmental ear and it's going to help build that intimacy between the two of you. I do think when a man shares his heart, it's important to just listen. That's that's very important. Just take the time to listen because it might be something that's weighing heavy on his heart that maybe he haven't shared with somebody in years and he wants to tell you. And when he does, if you are listening and you don't jump the gun and judge him and, and, and cut him off, because I think that's important, too, is not to cut him off while he while he's talking or he could have told you something that's really bothering him or it might be a surprise to you. Right. Just try to take it in without being judgmental uh, and take the necessary time to process that before making a judgment. Because if you judge him, he already have preconceived notions that this is what you're going to do. So take that time and then maybe ask some questions, not in a judgmental way, but just saying things like, how can I help you deal with this? Or how can I help you get over this hurdle? Just making him feel like we're in this together, even though it's something that happened to him or something that he's done. You have to come with the approach of us as a team, and that's going to help lower the, the guards as far as uh, lowering the walls, I would say, to his heart. Now you start to have access to him because he's like, oh, she didn't judge me. Maybe I can tell her some more things that I've been dealing with or my struggles or my fears. So if you take the time to listen, he's going to tell you more. So don't listen uh, with don't don't judge him based on what he's telling you. So make sure that there's no judgment. The second one is mothering. OK, mothering is very important. This is this is one that that a lot of men get frustrated with because mothering, in a sense, is my way is the right way. So when he's talking to you about something, your approach is let's do it like this. It's 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 controlling. Right. And no man like a woman that's controlling. That isn't saying that you don't know anything. It's just saying that, again, this teamwork thing, let's approach this as a team. If we can talk about this together, then we can get through it. Now, there are some areas, ladies, that you are better than him in. It can be something that finances, right? It could be um, health, just different things that you could possibly be better in, better than him. But for the most part, 
you have to know what he's good at and where he lacks, right? But I think this is an understanding that you both must have. If he's aware of his weaknesses and he's aware of your strengths, he's going to let you flow in that for men that's um, you know, mentally aware of your strengths in the relationship in the relationship. So don't mother him. Don't try to control everything that he does because he had a life before you. Right. I think we have to realize that because sometimes, especially if you are a mom, you you know, you have kids and you're used to telling them what to do and how to help them and, and how to help your kids grow and mature. So you're used to having rules. You, you're used to telling people what to do. So here your husband come along or or your fiance, somebody that you you in a committed relationship with and you have a tendency to not turn off the mother switch. So pretty soon he's going to stop talking to you because you're trying to mother him. Men already have a mom, right? They already have one. They don't need another one. They need you to be uh, his his wife or his woman. That's that's what he needs from you. He doesn't need a mother. That's a way to lose him. And he will shut down and you will wonder why he's not communicating with you, why the intimacy isn't there, because he feels like you're mothering him. The last one is this kind of coincides with number two is second guessing him on decision making, especially when it comes with the, when it comes to the kids. So let me give an example. He's saying to the kids, you can't have any more cookies. And I'm just using this as an example. And kids, sometimes they have a tendency to play, especially when they get a little older, when they're aware, they have a tendency to play mom against dad to see if they can get something from mom because dad said no. So if you have little kids, you know what I'm talking about. Or if you've had little kids, you get it. So when a kid and you, when dad says no, sometimes the kids will go to mom. Mom, can I have cookies? And if you second guess him in front of the kids and you're like, yeah, baby, go ahead and have some more cookies. Or you talk to your man and you're like, let him have two more cookies. That's going to draw a division because when the kids asked for something, he said, no, the kids go to mom. And then you say, yes. It's like you're undermining his authority. You will lose your man that way, too. And then it also teaches your kids that. Dad doesn't know anything. Mommy know everything because every time I go to mommy, mommy give me what I want. And a lot of times that's what kids do. That's what they want. So they're going to try to get their way. But instead, you just say, what did your dad say? Did your daddy say no? Then you leave it like that. That's making him feel more respected because at the end of the day, you don't want to get into an argument with him because he's not you know he's not going to respect it so if you are having differences with him then you have the conversation behind closed doors not in front of the kids now this is a whole different topic we can easily get into this about conflict resolution too and is that healthy for your kids to see you know mommy and daddy resolve conflict in front of them and that that's a whole different segment but i think it's important that especially in front of the kids or even in public, right? Maybe your, your husband is being a loose cannon or maybe he isn't, you know, acting uh, <laughs> appropriate in, in, in a certain um, setting or he's saying things, he's really feeling himself, right? And, you know, maybe he needs to be checked. Don't do it in public. Wait till you get behind closed doors and then you have the conversation. But I think it's when you tell your man these things when you tell him your boundaries and what you expect of him it's important that y'all have the conversation because when you do now he's being accountable for his actions because you can't hold someone accountable for a conversation that you didn't have so i think it's important that you set boundaries early in a relationship even if it's uncomfortable and you have those conversations and now you know that this is where we stand and either he's going to get with the program or he's not. And if he's not, then it's going to cause a lot of issues in the relationship. And he's probably not the one that you should be with. So let's go over those those three real quick. It's listen with a non-judgmental response. Number two is mothering when you think your way is the right way. 
And the last one is second guessing him on decisions, especially in front of the children. So thank you once again for watching this video. I hope that it will help you in this process of, of dating and helping you understand a man a little more because I'm a man, right? And this is what happens when you take a poll and you talk to men about what are some things that you feel that women are doing that's disrespectful to you. So this is what men are saying. Thanks again. And I appreciate the time. Go visit the website at scarytoremarry.com. This is Sean Heineman.